Hey, what's up everybody? Mr. Boylan back for some more fun chemistry times. Take a look at our content objective today. We are going to construct electron dot formulas to illustrate covalent bonds. As we think about breaking it down, first thing we're gonna do, define what the heck a Lewis structure is. Numero dos. We are then going to list the basic steps used in writing Lewis structures. And then finally, we're gonna use those basic steps to create Lewis structures for compounds that are covalently bonded together. So first, what the heck is a Lewis structure? These are just formulas that we use to model what atoms look like in a compound that contain atoms that are covalently bonded together. Just a model, representation, help you to better understand and visualize. Now, recognize in these Lewis structures, the element symbols are gonna be representing the atom's core. So, as you take a look at your screen, we're gonna be moving away from the CVR model and focusing on just those valence electrons. The example on your screen gives you an example for lithium. Core charge of plus one replaced with the symbol. The valence electrons are then represented using either dot pairs or dashes. And we'll use a dot pair if those valence electrons are not involved in bonds, indicating that they're represented in unshared or non-bonding pair of electrons. However, we'll use a dash if those valence electrons are involved in a bond and they represent a shared or bonded pair of electrons. If you take a look at your screen, you're given an example of a Lewis structure for water. So take a moment, look at the Lewis structure for water, recognize that those bonded pairs can be represented using dashed lines. The unbonded electrons be represented using dot pairs. Whew. Okay, so what are the steps to draw the Lewis structure? Now that we know what they are, how can we make our own? Step one, determine the total number of valence electrons in your molecule. So, for an example, I'm gonna use CH4. Carbon has four valence electrons and hydrogen has a single valence electron. Now there's one atom of carbon. So in total, all the carbon in this molecule is gonna contribute four valence electrons. I have four atoms of hydrogen in this molecule of CH4, contributing a total then of four valence electrons. My total number of valence electrons in the molecule, four from the carbon and four for the hydrogen, indicating a total of eight valence electrons. As a quick couple of subnotes here, keep in mind when you're working with polyatomic cations, you will subtract the number of electrons required to achieve the charge of the cation. And for polyatomic anions, you're gonna add the number of electrons required to achieve the charge of the anion. And we'll talk about that and practice that in class. Step two, divide the total number of electrons by two to get the number of electron pairs available. And we're really gonna focus on pairs because that's the number of electrons that can fit in any given orbital. So as I come back to my example of CH4, if I take my eight total valence electrons and divide by two, I get four electron pairs. Step three is where we start to build our Lewis structure. We determine the element with the lowest electronegativity. We make that the central atom in our molecule, keeping in mind that hydrogen will always be a terminal or non-central atom. So as I try to decide which of my atoms, carbon or hydrogen, is gonna go central, right away I should recognize that it's gonna be carbon because hydrogen is never going in the middle. However, you can always check your periodic table and think about the trend of electronegativity. So as I build my molecule, I'm gonna put carbon in the middle, surround it by those four hydrogens. Step four, we're gonna place one pair of electrons between the central atom and each of the terminal atoms and we'll subtract that number of pairs used from the total number of pairs that we started with. So I'm gonna put a pair in between that central atom and each of the terminal or non-central atoms. Now I've color coded them specifically so that you can recognize that one of the electrons in that pair is coming from the central atom, carbon, and one of the electrons is coming from the terminal atom, in this case, hydrogen. It took me four pairs to connect or bond each of the terminal atoms to the central atom, so I'll subtract those four pairs from my total. I've used all my pairs of electrons. Step five is basically where we check our work. 
If you have any remaining lone pairs, you're going to first put them on the terminal atoms to satisfy the octet rule. If you still have leftover pairs after you put them on the terminal atom, then put them on the central atom. And if the central atom is not yet surrounded by an octet of electrons, and you don't have any pairs to give it, because you've used them all already, convert one or more terminal lone pairs to double or triple bonds. In this case, as I take a look at my Lewis structure, I recognize that carbon has an octet. By sharing its four valence electrons, one with each of the hydrogens, it completes its octet. Now, hydrogen doesn't have an octet, However, it has completed its valence level, and by sharing its lone electron with one of the carbon atom's electrons, it completes its valence level. Now, keep in mind and remember that those shared pairs of electrons, or bonded pairs, could also be represented using dashes. Remember that each dash represents a pair, or two electrons. Okay, and just some final notes for Lewis structures. For most Lewis structures, make sure that each atom has the number of electrons that it started with. So as I come back to this example, part of the reason why I like to color code them is because it helps me remember which atoms they originally came from. Notice that my carbon has four valence electrons to start with, and it still has those four valence electrons at the end, albeit sharing each of them with one of the electrons from each of the hydrogens. Also, don't forget when you're drawing Lewis structures for polyatomic ions, you want to enclose them in brackets and include the charge of that polyatomic ion. And then lastly, for molecules with more than one central atom, use the formula to help you draw out the structure. Organic compounds with carbon chains are common examples of compounds with more than one central atom. And many times, you'll be given a formula that will sort of help you along the way to come up with the Lewis structure that's needed. Now, if you're in the pre-AP class, don't freak out too much because we're only going to be doing Lewis structures with a single central atom. However, coming back for AP next year, watch out for those organic compounds with multiple central atoms. All right, and that finishes up for our intro to Lewis structures. Have a fantastic day.